We have two broken Mazdas. One doesn't have an engine. We have another broken Mazda over here. This one does have an engine. This is back to your favorite Mazda channel where all of our Mazdas don't run. But we are finally, hopefully cooking with some. Mikey's on his way to San Diego. We're gonna rip this engine out. Uh, full rebuild because apparently after four rebuilds it still hasn't been rebuilt correctly and I'm gonna call out the tuner man I don't care his name is Matt I don't know what his last name is if you own a Mazda do not go to this dude because he will fuck your shit up this has been four rebuilds still can't get this car to run correctly so I don't know where this man's going because I don't really know anything about Mazda speeds but he's going somewhere to San Diego to rip the engine out and uh, rebuild this whole thing but you gotta love being static because we can't <laughs> We can't get the bumper over this little part. Oh, dude, look at Mikey fucked his shit up. Oh, maybe he just fucked the trailer up. I'm sorry, dude. Javier, I'm sorry if you're reading, if you're seeing this. I'm so sorry, Javier. We need a trailer. I think it's time. Hopefully, pretty soon this year, we can uh, make enough money so we can invest in a trailer I with a winch. <laughs> need a winch, too. Look at this. Winches save lives. This is how we were able to tow the FD around everywhere once I blew the rotary on that. Yeah. There we go. All right, let me let me get in here. I'm the captain of the ship. Put the hood down, please. Static is just complicated, guys. If honestly, like the god honest truth, being static is cool, but if you can save up and invest, get some bags. Bro, when you're on bags, you can literally just drive around like you're static. Like I don't understand why people are like bags are gay like get bags get bags <laughs> i'm telling you i really don't understand why people say bags are gay and this and that dude when you're on bags you can literally just drive as slow as you want to like if you're static and just the good thing about bags is you just air them up when you have to get a tow when you have to go over something like that's gonna fuck your car all up dude i'm telling you get bags guys like with with like the world ever evolving, there's so many things now for bags. Like let's say you pop a bag or whatever, they have these locks that you literally just install in your coilover. So you can just put enough air into your bag to allow the car to air up and then you just lock it down on those locks and then you can still roll your car around. There's just so many things. I'm telling you guys, get bags. I'm telling you, I'm not even trying to put like sell anything to you guys. I'm just trying to tell you guys, bags are the way to go. Like it, it just are, man, they just really are. Unless like you're going to the track and all that or you're like at a good height on coils, but if you're just deciding to like, just go stupid, slam slow, like just get bags, it's so worth it. Yo, I need to call HR. Why you guys have me crawl out of the trunk? I'm remember calling those, HR. Remember all those times I crawled out of the trunk for you? Hey, uh, here's like reason number two why you should get bags. Yeah, not only would yeah, bags yeah, help yeah, us yeah, on, yeah, not yeah, only would yeah, bags yeah, help yeah, us yeah, on yeah, the yeah, trailer, yeah, I can't get, look at, I can't get out. I can't get out. Oh, I know. You're the most action the Maz has ever seen. Your nuts on the seat. I forgot you had a bar back here. My nuts are getting squashed in the bar, dude. Yeah, that's why you only do a half cage and a full cage and you can still get out in the bag. Right, Brandon? Yeah. We can still reach the latch to open the trunk. Right, Brandon? Oh, oh! Your precious, my precious, precious. Get out of my car, you demon. Oh. Ta da! Well, I right, pay up. <laughs> now you break this shit down, throw it in the back. Right. Of the oh, dude, call each other. Put it in the back of the trunk. Oh, call each other. This is this is work. This is work abuse. This is work abuse. Dude, I have never seen someone out here lift this stuff in mandals. Bro, that's your whole problem right there. If you had, if you had yeah, Nike flip flops, proper lifting technique. Yeah, yeah. that's awful. That's what he told me to do. If did. you had yeah. Nike slides, you'd be good, bro. Hey, whose dog is this, bro? But, but since we are working on the Mazas today, we have a huge update on the RX7 and the rotary in here. I'm not gonna lie, it's actually pretty bad. We're gonna roll the clips right here and basically tell you guys what we found inside of the Mazda, but. It's not good, and I don't want to say, like, you guys are going to see the clips or anything. I don't want to say that I got played because in my heart, I want to say that the homie didn't know what was going on, and hopefully he got played too because I feel like that's kind of how it goes when you buy used cars, which is why I tell you guys all the time, buying used 90s cars, be prepared for what you're going to find. But, yeah, let's roll the clips. We have a huge update on the RX-7 engine. Abel has finally ripped it all apart, <laughs> and basically... I don't want to say I got finessed because I, I don't think 
The person they that sold me, didn't know yeah, I was gonna say I don't think the person whoever. that sold me the uh, the car knew because he was going off of the information he told. But I'm gonna let Abel basically run it down right now, and uh, I I think we we're finessed a little bit, right? Whoever sold him the engine, because we were told this engine was street ported, it was rebuilt, it had a bunch of stuff done to it, and none of that was done, right, Abel? Basically, it's stock. It's a, it was an unopened engine from Mazda. Um, as you can see, it's not even street ported or anything. It's still got the original two-piece apex seals, which that's what originally came on there with them. And uh, yeah, it, it had never been opened up. The only thing is someone had resealed the oil pan. Okay. But the engine the engine was uh, stock, completely stock. And basically for anyone that doesn't know, one of these days we'll go to Abel's shop, but he'll show you, because basically we're gonna we're gonna full bridge port this, this engine. Um, so. You can see, this is what killed it. Look at all the, all the brass in there. Mm-hmm. So basically, uh, it, it was worn and tired, and what did it was all you guys out there, I've said it a lot of times before, you do not over tighten the alternator belt. So you can see right here where the stationary goes like this, and it's smeared up towards where the belt is putting tension, and it killed the stationary gear bearings, and once that happens, it's just a cycling effect that goes downhill. Yep. So it ruined that, it ruined the e-shaft, and it got one rotor. And basically, here are your you rotors. Can see, you can see where the rotor smacked and smeared and compressed the seals. That's why I had lost compression. So all of that is pinched, you see, and smeared mm -hmm. where, it, where the metal hit the metal. Okay, well, there you guys can see it. My first time actually seeing a rotary engine ripped apart. And that's basically, these are the rotors that spin and give it power. But yes, as you guys can see, um, yeah, that's actually horrible right here. This is what... <laughs> the inside of the the uh rotary look like dude this is this is so bad remember i told you guys before when we did an oil change there was a lot of metal shavings well this look, you can see Polly. look how the seals are all they're all i mean i didn't do none of that you see how they mm -hmm. were already breaking down it's a miracle you weren't getting water in the oil i mean it's they're original yeah so that motor was 30 something years old 30 something years old so how old is it from 95 till now or, or it was like, actually 92 Okay, so 92 till now. 30, 33 years, 34 yeah. years. So guys, basically that's the thing. And the crazy thing is too, that me and Abel were honestly pushing these engine cause, cause we were going off of the information that I was told that it was street ported. Um, we honestly, and it's kind of crazy Abel cause it was, it was boosting 20 something pounds and we lowered it. Mm -hmm. Like that guys, do you guys, I don't think you guys understand like how much we were pushing. Yeah, we were pushing like this engine to limits. It should not have been pushed. So I'm honestly surprised it made it as far as it did. And that just goes to show you what Abel's actually capable of. After he tuned it, after he did all the little work, it still made it to SEMA. We made it through a bunch of two-step. And I honestly, this engine would have made it even further if it wasn't for me um, over boosting it. So the reason the engine popped is after we made it back from SEMA, I kind of, once we got the alignment, everything was tuned in, I started driving a little bit faster. I wanted to push the engine a little bit and that's honestly what ended up killing it. So that just goes to show you that Abel actually allowed this engine to probably make it a little bit longer than what it would have made it if I continued driving it the way it was. But uh, that is the biggest update we have on the engine um yeah never street ported it was never rebuilt it's still factory oem i mean able can oem 30 something years old. yeah like that's that's nuts guys and even at that after able tuned it you guys saw the flames we were doing which honestly just excites me because that gives you a little bit of the idea of what we're going to be able to actually do with the rx7 once able touches it rebuilds it and makes it correct you know you threw the water jacket that's how old it is that's why i tell people you can't buy used mm -hmm. shit unless you see it or use a motor because you don't know what you're gonna get so you see feel your finger yeah how the gland to hold the seal is as i said i'm uh. surprised which is okay if we replace this front one anyway because look the, that's just where the rotor touched mm -hmm. and even though i can stand that out it's already compromised no. for a nice build mm -hmm. and this is i mean look at abel first of all i want to say this because i know there's there's a lot of things that happen in the Rotary Committee. I don't know why you all hate each other, but uh, I want to put light to Abel's name. Um, Abel has been 100 and transparent with me since I met him. Um, this just goes to show you, literally broke down the engine before he gave me 
cost or anything like that. He's like, come check out the engine so you can see what I'm actually talking about. Um, and yeah, I mean, right in front of me as he's working on the rotary, it just goes to show you more and more things. But we're going to do this the correct way. And this just goes to tell you guys, please, if you're going to, I know it's expensive. That's why I tell you guys, if you're going to get into these 90s cars, just know what you're getting into. These, these cars are expensive to build the correct way. Don't cheap out. Trust me, guys. Do not cheap out. I've done it in the past where I've cheaped out and it's just, it's way more expensive. It's just right, no is good. Critical, right? So that, and that's how that's done. That's why that's done. People don't understand. So here goes the stock Apex seal, right? Stock Apex seal. So when, this is how it sits in the motor and the rotor, right? So that little corner is what digs in there and tears that up. Mm. You see, so that's why I don't use these on performance oh. engines. The ones I use have the corner seal bigger. Okay. Yeah, this way it's not rubbing. So basically what he's saying is this little down here, you guys can see where this is damaged right here. That little corner, that's oh, what he's talking the about. Peeling already. Yep. The chrome peeling. That's what they call the chrome peeling. Yep. Yep. So yeah, I mean, and then you guys can see kind of on this housing where your spark plugs go. It's kind of cool because now that the engine's kind of torn apart, you guys kind of see how everything works on these engines and that's where you're basically doing your spark that's why when abel was showing us on one of the video well when we found out it was blown if you pull this out when you actually turn the rotor that's where you can hear that is losing compression on this on the on the rotor that's kind of cool now that everything's apart i can start seeing what abel's talking about it's cool and that is basically the update on the rx7 the rotary the rotary is literally toasted but as you guys saw that car has never been rebuilt the engine hasn't been opened in 30 plus years it was all the original seals all the original stuff that you can't even buy anymore mazda doesn't even sell this stuff so my rebuild just went from costing a pretty good amount to costing a lot um we're gonna have to basically replace everything and it's gonna be a lot more than i had originally wanted but it's okay because once we get all that stuff replaced basically the the 13b is gonna be running phenomenally and as you guys saw it was never ported not even street port we're going full bridge port on that bad boy so just expect that full bridge port basically abel and me we are building an engine to be able to hold up to 900 horsepower am i ever going to push 900 horsepower definitely not i told abel i want something in the mid sixes if i can get something mid sixes i'm solid but 900 horsepower boys we're cooking now and obviously we still have a lot to do inside the engine bay i haven't been able to find stuff but if you're in socal and you can work on uh rx7s rotaries hit me up dude because the thing is i want to be able to film and show you guys everything that we're doing. So I need someone to come help me. I'm willing to pay for your hours, but I need someone that knows how to work on rotary so we can just basically make this whole engine bay look pretty. All right, guys, but enough of all of my broken cars. We have Dez. Dez just pulled up. Look at the 8.6. Maybe, look at that. Maybe I make my first gen into this and then dust him in our first gen. <laughs> dust him in our first gen. <laughs> What would you, I want to know, everyone comment down in the comments below. Do you guys like, obviously dude, it, this isn't fair because this is a full rocket bunny kit, but would you guys rather take the newer um, gen 8.6s or are you guys taking the old first gen 8.6s? Because I don't know, man, this looks badass, but between them, if they're both stock, I'm low key rocking with the first gen. But today we are doing something cool. I just bought a Toyota. We're converting Dez to the Nissan gang. We're gonna go check out a new car for him. Um, I'm pretty excited because I love when my friends get uh, new cars and they're cars that I already know how to work on. So it's fun. We're gonna go check out a Z uh, for Dez today. And that, the cool thing is he's gonna actually get an HR. Um, he started looking for cars and he was like, well, what should I get? And I told him, hey, listen, if you want a DE, they're cool, I have a DE, but we're not gonna get a DE. If you, if you want something that's gonna be fun, reliable, you have the funds, let's go get an HR. So we're gonna go check out some cars right now, some Zs, see what we find. No, that must be nice. What, what's up? What's good, bro? <laughs> hey, those those extra 500 you just saved, what's up? Yeah, what's For your up? drivers over here, you know what I'm hey, saying? Man, Give us a little tip. Give us a little tip, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I hey. recorded. <laughs> she's like, give my cut, baby. Hey, I'm media. Give my cut, baby. It's Boo Media right here. Boo Media. Media. <laughs> LLC. LLC. We're starting it right now. Uh, Boo Media. LLC. That'd actually be pretty sick. Yeah, Boo Media. <laughs> Boo Media. All right, talk to me. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Damn, talk to me, baby. What's up? Yeah, talk to me nice and don't talk to me at all. Shit, I'm about to jack you off, bro. Let me ride with you, baby. <laughs> 
Shirley's like, nah, bro. I'm cancel. Say, Shirley. Cancel. Shirley. So we just bought a new car for Dez, the Z, as you guys saw in the video. And this is definitely not the weather you want to be driving a Z in. Look at this man. This man can barely drive over there. This is definitely not the weather you want to be driving a Z around. And it started raining out of nowhere. California is so weird. But let's see how Dez fares driving a Z around. Look at him. Struggling over there. Look at him. Look at him. Struggling. Struggling. I'm getting wet too. Look at this man. Yo, what's up? Can I help you, DK Coochie? Boys. We're in action. We're in action. I'm a Z boy. He's a Z boy. <laughs> Fuck boy Z coming in hard. <laughs> the new reiteration, if you guys didn't know, years ago, my IG was Fuck boy Z. I don't even know why I named my IG that. Well, we got a new Fuck boy Z right here. Look at him. Get out of here, baby. Hey, real quick. Are the lights on? Uh, yes, they are. We'll talk about Dez's new car in a little bit, but I mean, it does have some issues, but to be honest mechanically it's it's all good so i mean dude he paid a, a pretty good price for an hr because honestly these cars sell for a pretty good amount See you over there. yes sir oh, look at this guy he's got a tome i think I don't, know. I don't know what that is this man's acting up already takeover kid now <laughs> he's a takeover kid he's a takeover now. kid now he finally has the horsepower <laughs> because uh before with all of dez's cars Look, I'm gonna say this, Toyotas, yeah, y'all might be reliable, but that horsepower, y'all lagging, you know what I'm saying, baby? Unless you're talking about a 2J, then you guys ain't lagging, you know But the new oh, Toyotas, you know, y'all lagging. <laughs> Look at this man smiling. I'm happy I started filming. This man smiling. Yo, we turned Dez into a Z-boy. Hey, this man, next time we see him, he's gonna have a little afro faded up and everything. He's gonna be a little VQ, like a little- Couple lines right here on the eyebrow. Babe, I told him he's gonna be fuckboy Z. <laughs> <laughs> fuck boy over here. Yeah. Hey, but look at this is a cool thing, man. We got Dez into Z's, but not just any Z. Obviously, I had to tell him which way to go, and obviously, I wasn't gonna let my boy, you know, get anything bad. So we got him on 2007 HR. You know, you guys know. What? 2008. Oh, 2008. Dang, he said, hold up. He said, hold up. Don't downgrade me, baby. He said, don't downgrade me. I got the best. Well, it's cool literally the last year yeah right? so say, of, of the he said he said hold up he said but you guys know i i mean des really did ask me he's like yo what do you think he showed me a 2005 i think or a 2006 he's like what do you think about this and i told him hey listen bro i have an 04 de love my z but if you're gonna spend money on a z get an hr for daily purposes hr is a good way to go and then obviously you guys know stock at a factory an hr doesn't make more you know too much more horsepower than a de but what an hr does and a de can't is the internal power and everything that the newer hr models have first of all they don't have that oil consumption problem and number two with just simple mods and a tune you get way more power out of an hr than you would a de so that's what we got him interior wise the car is not bad it looks sick it comes with a couple little goodies in here already you got you got a short shift in here bang 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 so the shifting is short it's cool obviously if you guys if you guys have never seen what an hr looks like let me just run it down for y'all real quick here's the biggest difference for an hr the hr has a two intakes coming down for more air more power like i said overall out of the factory you don't get too much more power through uh from an hr to a de but as you start doing the modifications, you start doing the little tunings, an HR has way more power capabilities than a DE does. Surely Boom Media, Boom Media over here. Look at this man, you know what I'm saying? There ain't no way he just got a V6 NA. He got to feel that torque, baby. It's definitely different from having an 86, I promise you guys that. I just kind of gave him a little, couple of little things, you know, just drop, drop the clutch, clutch kick, and then just feather the throttle. That's all you need. Feather the throttle, that's all you need. Not bad, not wow. bad. That is so much easier <laughs> yeah. with the V6. Way easier, right? Oh my God. Way more <laughs>
Jose crashes into the sidewalk. I'm like, no. Oh my God. First day on the job, crashing. <laughs> crashes. Oh I'll be canceled. Dude, DK, what's up, baby? <laughs> we got the new DK. <laughs> oh shit, baby. This man crazy. He's he said he's just DK now. He just DK now. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we turned him into a, a freaking uh, a sideshow oh, man. He like <laughs> turned him into a sideshow. We're gonna see. We're gonna see DK at the sideshows now. <laughs>